Greetings fellow detectives, Wizard Kitten here bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor and by all the official fellow detective channel members. If you too would like to support the channel and gain access to exclusive features, check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten to become a patron or click join next to the subscribe button to become an official fellow detective. The Nancy Drew PC games are no stranger to puzzles, and also no stranger to a particular kind of puzzle, mini-games. Starting in Secret of the Scarlet Hand and really taking off after Curse of Blackmore Manor, mini-games are a bit of a staple in the Nancy Drew series. When done well, they add fun to a game and help set the scene. They can also be a great way to lengthen game time but this also runs the risk of tedium should they take up too much time. On that note, let's explore the mini-games of the Nancy Drew series, their merits and their pitfalls, in a tier list style. At the very bottom of the tier list will be mini-games that are both tedious and useless. These are the mini-games that don't serve an actual purpose, and if removed from the game, no difference would be made. They also are not fun to play. A step above are games that are at least useful, but still tedious. In the middle, we have mini games that are just kind of meh or neutral. They might be somewhat fun and somewhat useful, but not enough to really stand out. Close to the top, we have the mini games that are fun, but a bit useless. They are at least entertaining, as a game should be, but they don't serve much of a purpose beyond that. Finally, the best mini games are those that are both fun and useful. The best of the best. To be included as a minigame, I am only including competitive games that can be won or lost. This does not include puzzles where Nancy is basically only competing against herself, like Swimmer's Itch in The Haunted Carousel. This is framed like a game, but the only way to win is to solve the puzzle by oneself. A true game must be more of a competition. A task can also only be counted as a game if it requires some sort of skill or work to win. For example, finding the Ace of Spades from Monty in the final scene only requires a simple click, therefore making it less a game and more a task. So let's start at the bottom of the tier list, identifying the puzzles that are tedious and useless. First, Petroglyph Punch in Curse of Blackmore Manor and Model Match from Danger by Design. These two games are played exactly the same way and both serve no purpose other than delaying the progress of the game. You technically have to play Petroglyph Punch to get a glow stick from Jane, but once we get the glowing rock, this becomes redundant. The only mechanic for both games is moving around at least three pieces until they match, so hardly exciting. Thus, at the bottom. Also on this level is Land Rush in Trail of the Twister. In this game, players choose large blocks of color, attempting to find the most by the end. It's fine the first couple of times, but gets awfully repetitive after a while. It also has no point, because the only benefit to playing is getting paw pennies, which we can get by other means. All in all, not a winner. Also at the bottom is Aggregation from The Deadly Device. It requires players to match similar symbols, adding one at a time to a square board based on a pattern. This puzzle is repetitive and uninteresting and only presents a barrier to progression. It is dull, tedious, and pointless. But thankfully, it's the last one. Let's move up to the next level, the mini games that are useful but tedious. First, the horse race in Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. This game provides a token to use in Buell's shop, but it is entirely based on luck and therefore not very fun to play. It can even become frustrating when one keeps choosing the wrong horse. Next, Fox and Geese in White Wolf of Icicle Creek. This game is extremely useful and unlocks the entire final labyrinth. One player attempts to trap the other without their pieces being captured. It would be fine to do this once, but with how many times we have to play, it becomes long and tedious very quickly. In fact, it's extremely overwhelming. Next, the monkey games in Ransom of the Seven Ships. They are useful for winning items from the monkeys, but they can be incredibly aggravating. One of them is better than the other two, but collectively they just take up so much time and the monkeys are so rude that I can't even forgive the reasonable game. 
They all belong here, in my opinion. Now, let's move on to the mini games that are right in the middle. Neutral, meh. First, Barnacle Blast in Secrets Can Kill Remastered and The Haunted Carousel. Depending on its difficulty, Barnacle Blast can be reasonably fun or super tedious. Players must move the slider back and forth to bounce a ball into the barnacles, blasting them all away. In The Haunted Carousel, it's useful to get a token for the vending machine, so I think this minigame is a meh. Next, Mini Golf in Secret of the Old Clock. The mini golf is useful for finding clues, but the fun factor is really dependent on whether you're on junior or senior detective. Mini golf is fun until you're stuck there for hours trying to win. So, neutral it is. Next, Gold Rush in Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon and Pachinko in Shadow at the Water's Edge. Both are useful for winning items that Nancy needs, but both involve the same mechanic. Pull a lever to launch little marbles and hope they land in the right place. It doesn't involve much skill or energy, so these are just neutral. Ski Ball in Legend of the Crystal Skull, similar to Mini Golf, results in some important items and is only occasionally fun. It's very finicky and it's easy to go from success to disaster with a simple roll of the ball. Thus, it ends up being only neutral. Next, Scopa. This is a Venetian card trick-taking game, and many fellow detectives may disagree with me placing it in this category. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy a good game of Scopa, but I do not enjoy getting trapped in a never-ending loop of losing Scopa for far too long. Since it can become tedious if one experiences bad luck, I have to place it here. Now we start getting to the fun mini-games, starting with our second from the top tier, mini-games that are fun, but useless. First up, Buell in Secret of the Scarlet Hand and Curse of Blackmore Manor. Buell involves rolling pieces of corn to move soldiers in an attempt to capture your opponent's soldiers. It's fun, but ultimately not that useful. It serves as a barrier to progressing in the game, but anything else could serve this purpose. Therefore, fun, but a bit useless. Next, Skull and Bones in Curse of Blackmore Manor. This game requires players to make matches of three with mechanics similar to Go Fish. Skull and Bones, like Buell, really only serves as a barrier to the next step, but is quite fun, so tier two it is. Next, Leaping Lizards in Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. It's certainly satisfying to best Tino Balducci in this quick little game of logic. It's low stress and a good time, but pretty much has no point except elongating the game. Similarly, Wiki Tiki in Creature of Kapu Cave. This stylized version of Rock, Paper, Scissors is easy and low stress, but basically pointless. You can get little trinkets or Big Island Bucks by winning, but otherwise, it's just a delightful little diversion. Next, Scram and Ice Hockey in Warnings at Waverly Academy. Both of these are competitive games against Leela, and they're both quite fun, not too hard, but also not too easy but Leela only uses them to delay our progress and certainly didn't need to do so, making them fun, but ultimately not very useful. Next, Raid and Monster in the Captive Curse. Just like Scram and Ice Hockey, these games are fun to play and just the right amount of difficulty. Raid is a great unique board game with a race to the finish and Monster involves attempting to capture as many of your opponent's cows as possible. Ultimately though, their only purpose is the fun they provide. Raid might get Nancy some coins, but she has other options for money, and ultimately coins aren't that important in this game anyway. Next, Senate in Tomb of the Lost Queen. This ancient Egyptian board game requires players to beat their opponents to the end by moving pieces one by one. This game is fun to play, but really has no purpose other than that. And finally, we have all the mini games that are fun to play and actually result in something useful. I'm a bit surprised to see the games that we have at the top of this list, but these all meet the requirements I have set. First, Betty the Automaton in Curse of Blackmore Manor has more or less the same game mechanics as Skull and Bones and is just as fun, but it's also useful because it holds the arrow key necessary to complete the entire Penvalin puzzle. Since it's both fun and useful, it belongs at the top. 
Next, in Haunting of Castle Malloy, both darts and Difference Detective are fun to play and result in important items that Nancy requires to solve the mystery. The darts are a classic game, and Difference Detective is a fun race against the clock to find the differences between two pictures. They're both useful and fun, and so are winners in my book. And finally, Archery in The Silent Spy. The mechanics of archery are fairly straightforward. Get the best score by hitting the bullseye or as close as you can, as often as possible. If Nancy gets the high score, she's awarded with a bow and arrow that she requires to solve the mystery and that was also likely used by her mother, giving it sentimental value as well. All in all, useful and a good time. And that does it for all of the mini-games, tier ranked based on their utility and fun factor. Most of my favorites on this list are in the fun but useless category, which is interesting since I usually prize utility above all else. But what do you think, fellow detectives? What are your favorite mini-games in the series and why? What do you prize in a mini-game? What are your least favorite mini-games and why? Let a wizard kitten know in the comment section down below. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button or tipping me for the video with a super thanks next to the download button right beneath the video. If you would like to come join a fantastic group of fellow detectives at Mystique Manor as a patron for the channel, gain access to exclusive content, and support the making of more content like this, please check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten. I also have channel memberships with exclusive badges and emojis to use during streams and in the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming an official fellow detective, click join next to the subscribe button. Please feel free to follow the channel on Instagram or Discord, linked in the description box down below. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Cozy Game content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.